Hey there, so I'm hoping right now that we can go over the FMLA relatively quickly. There's a lot more to what I'm getting ready to cover, so I encourage you to make sure that you're reading and learn um, information that will pertain to you once you're on the job field, like poster requirements and how a supervisor, according to the DOL, our Department of Labor is not allowed to contact an employee's um, medical advisor. These are important things as well, but they're probably not going to be on the test for, at the APHR level. The PHR are a little bit different. Um, so we're going to go jump right in here, hopefully get everything that we need to. We're just going to kind of bullet it, and this should be enough information to guide you and for you to retain to help you pass the exam. So the FMLA pertains to companies with 50 or 100 more employees. So any medium or large size organization that you work at, it this is gonna pertain to you or your employees and or it could be you, you don't know. So it's actually really good to know this because you might find yourself in need of this someday. The Family and Medical Leave Act or FMLA of 1993, which was also expanded in 2008 and 2010. So the FMLA is for you know, a worker that needs to take care of either their, their direct illness, uh, like if you're sick yourself, or if they need to take care of um, for a seriously ill child, spouse, or parent, that, that counts as well. Adoption and uh, childbirth also are covered under FMLA. So what happens is an employee becomes eligible for FMLA after they've worked at an organization for 26 weeks or a year. From that, they can get up to 12 weeks off, and the 12 weeks does not have to be used consecutively, so it can actually be used in day increments, or it can be used all 12 at the same time. The number resets one year after the first day of leave. So if you've taken, if you start your 12-week leave, say, in July, and you want to take another 12 or need to take another 12 weeks off in January, you will not be covered under the FMLA at that point. Um, it's just, it doesn't restart until July, whenever that, in that instance, not until July. And they're usually unpaid. I think I covered this on, I've made this video a couple times, but again, they're most likely unpaid unless an or the organization chooses otherwise. So it's not likely or common that it will be paid. Um, the one other, a couple other things I want to note about this that are really important is that while an employee is on leave, the organization is expected to continue to pay the healthcare cost of the employee. So um, if they have insurance or anything like that, not the full cost of whatever's happening, but the healthcare is associated that the employee employer was already paying for the employee, they're expected to pay that for the, the employee just as if they were still working. Also, an employee is expected to come back to their job or a, an equal job. So they cannot come back and be demoted. That That's not okay. Um, the other thing that is also really important is that the, when it comes to military, they get a 26 week limit and it renews every 12 months and there are other provisions underneath that. But really what you need to remember is that 50 or more employees for the FMLA pertains, they need to have worked 12 weeks or 26 or 26 weeks or 12 months in order to get this time off and is to take care of somebody that's really close to them or themselves, most likely unpaid, and it resets every 12 months, not every calendar year. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.